I could make this tutorial really long and drawn out, but I'm worried that you'll grow old watching it and I don't want that to happen. So instead, let's just get right into it. We're going to use Final Cut Pro and two other free apps to create this effect. First, you're going to need a clip where you want the person to grow old, like this. Next, you want to export this clip as a JPEG sequence by clicking on the share icon in the corner and selecting export image sequence. Click on settings and make sure the export setting is set to JPEG. If you don't have that as an export option, head over to Final Cut Pro, preferences, destinations, and you can add the export destination from this option down here. Once that has been exported, you'll see that you have a JPEG image for every frame in that clip. I'll rename this folder to Young. This will be important later. As you can see, there are 122 frames in this example, and I want to grab a frame near the middle. So I'll grab frame 61 and I'll right click to airdrop that image to my iPhone. Next, we're going to use FaceApp to create the older version of me. FaceApp is available on iOS and Android, by the way. I'm just using the free version of FaceApp here and I'll select the image I want to apply the effect to. I'll scroll over to the age effects and then I'll select the old effect and hit apply. I'll save that and airdrop the photo back to my MacBook Pro. This image has a watermark, so I'll drop that into my timeline and place it around where frame number 61 would be. If there's not much movement in that part of the frame, like in this shot, then it doesn't have to be at exactly frame number 61. If there is movement though, you'll have to place it on the exact frame so that the motion lines up. I'll use the draw mask effect to remove that watermark and I'll feather the edges of the mask slightly as well. You could also remove the watermark in Photoshop if you like. Then I'll export just this frame as a JPEG and it will become my reference frame. So I'll create a new folder calling it ref and I'll export the image there. In Finder, I'll head back to frame 61 and I'll copy and paste this file name and rename the reference frame to match. This is a super important step to make sure that the steps that follow will work. Now we have one frame where I'm old and we need to create old frames for every frame in the clip. That is where this free app EBSynth comes in. It's an incredible app that allows you to transform videos into paintings and to do other cool things using the original video and a reference frame. With EBSynth open, I'll click here to select the video frames that I exported at the beginning of this tutorial. Then I'll click over here to select the reference keyframe I created using FaceApp and you'll see that the number of frames has updated here at the bottom. I'll open up these advanced settings and I'll change the deflicker amount to 1.5 I find that 1.5 to 2.0 usually gives me smoother results. I'll select the output destination here and I'll create a new folder called old. Then I'll hit run all and I'll let EBSynth do its thing. It takes a while, so let this run in the background while you do something else, like learn something new on Skillshare. If you don't already know, Skillshare is an online learning community and it's a great place to learn new skills. There are classes on productivity, marketing, and freelancing to mention a few, but Skillshare's main focus is creative classes like video editing, animation, photography, graphic design, and so much more. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. You can use that free month to learn some new skills like visual effects, shooting better videos with an iPhone, or even brush up on your Final Cut Pro skills with my course, the basics of Final Cut Pro. So I'd highly recommend grabbing that free month while you can. If you don't like Skillshare, you can always cancel it before the month is over with no commitments. But I think once you try it for yourself, you will love learning new skills with the courses they have. When EBSynth is all done, import all of those frames into Final Cut Pro and with them all selected, hit Ctrl D to change the duration to one frame and hit return. Then hit Alt G to create a compound clip. I'll then drop that clip on top of the original clip. And you can use the shortcut key V to hide the clip on top so that you can do an AB comparison. One thing EBSynth struggles with is eyes and mouth. As you can see, those get a little bit messed up. But don't worry, we'll fix it. Let's add a draw mask effect and mask out the eye. I'll invert the mask, increase the feather a little bit, and then I'll add a keyframe for the control points and the transform parameters. Then I'll go frame by frame to mask out the eye so that we can see the eye underneath on the young clip. I'll repeat the process for the other eye and for the mouth as well. And then I'll add a cross dissolve using the shortcut command T on the old clip to fade the effect in. 
By the way, if you like editing with shortcuts, I highly recommend checking out my 100 Final Cut Pro shortcuts video. There are loads of time-saving shortcuts in there that I'm sure will help you speed up your workflow. And one more time, here is the final result. Hopefully it was short enough that you didn't grow old and I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. Please hit that like button if you did and maybe try watching this video next.